students. Today we are going to read How to Make Bubbles. This book was written by Erica L. Shores. This is a nonfiction book. It will teach us how to make bubbles. There's my table of contents located in the front of a nonfiction book. The table of contents tells us our smaller topics and what pages we'll find them on. Because it's a nonfiction book, in the back we'll also find a glossary and an index. The glossary is on page 22. The index is on page 24. The glossary will tell us what the special words in this book mean, the words that we will need in order to talk about bubbles. The index would tell us what pages those special words are found on. Getting started on page four. Making bubbles is on page six. How does it work is on page 18. If I were to do a quick picture walk, I would study the photographs. The pictures that are in this book are not illustrations, they're photographs. They were taken with a camera. And I can see a little girl looking at the bubbles while she washes dishes in the sink. I see a page that says, here's what you need, and it has all the materials that we would need. I like how that's right in the front. I could go get everything that I needed before we even started. Getting started. Bubbles float in the sink. Bubbles pop in a glass of soda. Mix together simple ingredients and make your own super bubbles. Ingredients are the things that you need in order to make a recipe. The materials or supplies that you would need. Here's what you would need. One gallon of warm water. One cup of dish soap. So they have very specific measurements. Not a whole bunch of water, but one gallon. So you would have to take this jug and fill it all the way up. This measuring cup is for one cup. They want us to fill that with dish soap. This is a tablespoon, not a regular spoon. It's a tablespoon. And they want us to put exactly one tablespoon of glycerin. They need a large plastic tub, a bin, that you can mix everything together with in. Here's a spoon, that's what we would use to mix it. A wire coat hanger, so not a plastic one. And then here I see some things that you would find maybe in your kitchen at home. Drinking straws, a potato masher, a spatula, and they said other utensils with holes. This is a fly swatter, so it's not really a utensil, but it has holes and pipe cleaners. Making bubbles. Pour one gallon of warm water into a large plastic tub. So that's what she's doing first. She poured the entire gallon of warm water into that large plastic tub. That's first. Let's find out what she does next. Add one cup of dish soap and one tablespoon of glycerin. So she puts in the dish soap and puts in the glycerin. So first she put the water, then she put in the dish soap and glycerin. What is she doing now? Mixing it, okay. Slowly stir the mixture. Try not to make suds. Let the bubble mixture sit for two or three days. So first she put in the water. Next she added the soap and glycerin. Then she stirred it and left it alone for how long? Two or three days. Let's find out what they get to do last. Oh, they're making their own bubble wand. Look at that. She's moving the wire coat hanger and pushing and pulling until she made it into a circle. 
and it looks like she's wrapping it with pipe cleaners. Make your own bubble wand by shaping a wire hanger into a circle. Wrap pipe cleaners around the hanger. Ask an adult to carry the tub outside. Blow lots of bubbles with a straw. Dip a potato masher into the tub. Blow through the holes. Here she is with a straw. She's blowing through the straw and making more bubbles. That's a potato masher. It's one of those utensils that you could find in the kitchen that has holes in it. So she dipped it into the bubble mixture and then blew through it. Put the hanger into the mixture. Pull it out slowly. Gently move it through the air. You may have to try several times before you make a giant bubble. Wow, look how big the hanger is. So she turned it into a giant bubble wand to make giant bubbles. How does it work? Hmm. So the how-to part of the book is over. They told us how to make bubbles. Do you remember what they did first? They put the water in the tub. Do you remember what they did next? They added the soap and glycerin. Do you know what they did then? Or third? They had to stir it with a spoon slowly and leave it sit for two or three days. And last, they carried it outside and used it to play and make bubbles. This part of the book will tell us how it works. How does it work? Blowing air can make a thin film of soap stretch. When stretched too far, the film snaps closed. Air trapped inside makes a round bubble. That's why bubbles are spheres. Bubbles burst when they dry out. The soapy film gets too thin and the air inside escapes. A bubble also breaks when it touches something dry. So here's our glossary. It's in the back of the book. Remember, you can find the glossary in the back of a nonfiction book. The glossary will tell us what all those special words that they used means. Some of the special words that they use to talk about bubbles are burst, escape, film, glycerin, ingredient, and mixture. Let's read and find out what those words mean. The glossary is like a little dictionary that will tell us what the special words mean. To burst means to break apart suddenly. Escape means to get away from. Film is a very thin layer of something. Glycerin is a syrupy liquid used in soaps, perfumes, and other products. An ingredient is an item used to make something else. And a mixture is something made up of different things mixed together. In the back of the book, we can also find the index. An index tells us where to find those special words. Remember, burst was one of our special words that we use if we're talking about bubbles and you would find the word bursting on page 20. Glycerin was one of those special words that we used to talk about bubbles, and we found that word on page eight. Thank you for reading How to Make Bubbles with me. Do you remember some of the ingredients or supplies that we needed, the materials? Do you remember what order we did everything in? What did we do first? What did we do next? Then what did we have to do? And what would you do last if you were making bubbles? It's very important to know the order 
that you would do something if you're going to teach someone else how to do it. Thank you for reading this book with me today.